Hello, very good evening. Welcome back to my video presentations. So we are going to continue with the sixth chapter of semester two SDPM, where we're going to study uh, group 17, which is also known as halogens. Okay. So uh, what are we going to learn in this chapter? Uh, we're going to have a look at physical properties of selected group 17 elements, uh, reaction of selected group 17 elements, reaction of selected halides ions, and industrial applications of halogens and their compounds. So uh, based on the past year question analysis, this is also one of the very important chapters that we have for STBM chemistry in semester two. So let's have a look together at the first subtopic, which is the physical properties of selected group 17. Showing to you in here is how physically they look like for iodine, bromine, and chlorine. As you can see in here, this is how this uh, this is how this uh, uh, chlorine looks like. So uh, iodine looks like so it is a uh, black solid, whereas this uh, bromine is a reddish brown liquid, whereas chlorine in here is a yellow greenish gas. So uh, this is a little bit of information about their physical properties. So as usual, when going down to the group atomic radius increase uh, as I mentioned just now in terms of color and physical state uh, chlorine is yellow greenish gas bromine is reddish brown volatile liquid iodine is black salivable solid uh, in melting point boiling point increases down to the group uh, however bond energy decreases when going down to the group same goes with electron affinity and also electro affinity uh, electronegativity so let's have a look one by one of all these physical properties shall we Okay, starting from the atomic radius. So we're going down to atomic radius as usual. Then going down to group 17, atomic radius increase. So this is due to when going down to the group 17, nuclear charge increased as the proton number increased. However, uh, the screening effect increased as more shells are used. Uh, this will result in the effective nuclear charge to decrease, causing the atomic radius to increase down to the group. So this is as usual every time. Have, we have already repeated this for quite some time. Hopefully, you all will still be able to explain the trend of atomic radius when going down to any group of it. Okay. Okay, the next thing is uh, about melting point, boiling point, physical state at room temperature, color intensity, and also density of group 17. So all group 17 exists as diatomic molecules. So you have fluorine exists as F2, chlorine Cl2, bromine Br2, iodine I2, and estatine 82. So physical state, uh, as you can see in here, they have very different physical state, in, uh, even though they have the uh, same classifications of element. So uh, that is why, uh, because due to their different forces that holds in between them. Okay, so generally we say that when going down to group 17, melting point, boiling point increases down chlorine bromine to iodine, as the relative molecular mass increase from chlorine to bromine to iodine, cause the weak Van der Waals forces that hold in between them increases. So as a result, the melting point increase uh, down group 17 for each element, hence they exist as a different physical form. Okay, so uh, in here at the same time, whenever we are talking about weak intermolecular forces, we're also going to see on how close back they become. So if you flash back on the diagrams that we see just now, so this is how uh, per unit volume of iodine looks like. You can see how close back they are. Bromine is slightly loose, whereas iodine is very loose. So eventually, it causes not only the uh, density to increase when going down to the group. It also consequently cause the color intensity to increase down to the group. So that is why you can see the, the color become darker and darker as we go down to the group. Okay. So uh, same goes with the explanations for the volatility of the molecule. So we generally we say is that when going down to group 17, volatility decreases due to the strong intermolecular forces of the particles. Hence, they are harder to vaporize. Okay. Okay. Uh, then we have a uh, look at the electronegativity, bond energy, and electron affinity. So electronegativity measures the ability to pull the bonding pair electrons towards the atom. So um, electronegativity of group 17 decreased when going down to the group due to the increase of covalent radius, hence decrease the effective nuclear charge. So we say that fluorine has the highest electronegativity about, uh, among all group 17. Actually, it's among all elements inside the periodic tables uh, for information. So uh, it is the most uh, easily attracting electron of all elements in here. So uh, bond energy measures the heat required to break the bond form between two atoms. So as we say is that all group 17 exists as a diatomic molecule and eventually they are held by 
uh, covalent bond. So the energy required to break this one is measured in such way. So for example, if you want to break two chlorine in here to become two chlorine gaseous atom, so it requires a positive 242.5 kJ per mole. So uh, this bond energy decreases when going down to group 17 due to increase in atomic radius first, which result the bond length increase and cause the bond strength to decrease. So when going down to the group, lesser energy is required to break the covalent between uh, halogens in there. Now, uh, surely we expect that fluorine will have the highest bond energy. But do you know that fluorine has even lower energy compared to chlorine? So this is due to a fluorine atom is too small. So I even draw out the diagram for you to see that. Because the small fluorine atoms that is at the same time surrounded by many lone pair electrons. So this lone pair, lone pair repulsions are actually eventually greater than the lone pair, bond pair repulsion. So as a result, they repulse themselves uh, greater and causes the fluorine covalent bond to break easier. So that is why you as, uh, in here we expected that uh, this uh, fluorine will have a lower bond energy compared to chlorine in here. Okay? Okay, and then we also have electron affinity. So electron affinity is a heat liberator when one mole of gaseous atom accepts one mole of electron to form gaseous scenario under standard condition. So this is the general equation for the reaction. So we use fluorine example. F plus E minus give F minus. So we say that electron affinity become less negative also due to the decreasing of the effective nuclear charge as the electrostatic uh, forces between weaker become weaker when going down to group 17 so you expect that lesser heat uh, lesser heat is um, released when going down from fluorine until iodine okay and then we are going to talk about solubility of halogens in water so uh, halogens are slightly soluble uh, most of the so uh, halogens are soluble in water. Uh, among them, fluorine, of course, is the most soluble because uh, not only because of the entirely change of hydration of fluorine is very exothermic, because fluorine can also form hydrogen bond with water. So this is a very important chemistry that happens in between fluorine and also water. So now both chlorine and bromine are considerably soluble in water to form an acid and acid halide via this proportionation reaction. So uh, when while iodine is sparingly soluble in water, so this is the half. Uh, this is the chemical equation to shows that this proportionation of the uh, chlorine and boron when going down to the group. So why do we say that it is a disproportionation reaction? So you can see that the oxidation state of chlorine changes from zero to become minus one of the HCl and plus one of the HOCl. So oxidation and reduction occur in the same time. So that is why we call this as a disproportionation proportionation reactions. Now, and this reaction cannot be done under ultraviolet condition. Why? Because um, the well-known H. XO in here is actually used frequently as a bleaching agent. However, these bleaching properties can be decomposed when exposed to sunlight, especially to ultraviolet light actually. So where it decomposed to become a HCl and also O2 for example. So uh, eventually if we compare between these two equations, we can write an overall equation of 2Cl2 plus 2H2O before HCl plus O2. Iodine aqueous solution can be prepared by dissolving ion pot uh, iodine in potassium iodide aqueous solution and form a brown liquid. So this is the uh, equation for the reaction to take place. So they are at equilibrium in between iodine and iodide ions uh, aqueous solutions. Huh? So uh, in here, we also use to see the effect of the organic sulfur when a uh, halogen is dissolved in them. Now it seems like uh, halogens are more soluble in organic solvent rather than, than in water because uh, don't forget all halogens are non-polar molecule. So when they are non-polar molecule, they are more soluble in non-polar solvents such as CCL4 itself. So these are the color when chlorine, bromine and iodines are dissolved in CCL4 and also in aqueous solution. So in aqueous solution, chlorine is pale yellow, bromine is brown solution, Iodine is also brown, but the iodine brown is a deeper brown for information. Whereas when chlorine dissolves in CCL4, uh, it is colorless. Bromine is still brown. Iodine is purple. So I'm going to show you one of the diagrams that shows the uh, differences between uh, CCL4 and also uh, this one. Now I, I believe that in here you can see that the color a little bit lighter because concentration in here are actually quite low. So, but still, you can still see a very distinguished color in between them. So, uh, below layer is for water, above layer is for organic solvent, yeah? Okay, so uh, this is the physical properties of group 17. Okay, so I'll start my lesson for right time being. We continue later on with the chemical properties. See ya!